So what is wrong with PC gaming and why am I still playing some games on consoles despite having a pretty decent PC? Let's look into this. It's always good to start the viewer off with some kind of riddle or brain teaser. Here we have a classic one. If I have a machine that does everything better than a different machine, why would I use the second machine? Where you may see a very simple answer to this question, there are some on YouTube who insist otherwise. So uh, let's see the reasoning behind this one. Ah uh, yes, I love getting my games from Enema. And in case you didn't know, Enema is basically just G2A, but kinda sketchier. And the fact that a video trying to dethrone the PC is sponsored by a site like this actually may be the peak of unintentional comedy. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I would like to talk about PC gaming and, well, I want to talk about the good and the bad, as always, and, um, you know. No ugly this time. Raising bars. Every day, raising bars. I will try to balance things out a little bit. Now, those of you that have been following me on this channel know that I'm both PC and console gamer. Well, I've never heard of your channel before, but with almost 23,000 subscribers, I'm gonna guess you've got some pretty solid content. Let's take a look at some of your other videos. Sony is afraid of Xbox Game Pass and wants Xbox Activision deal blocked. New Kojima's Xbox Series XS game leak. Big Xbox Series XS 2023 games. Xbox Series X Power. Performance versus resolution. Well, I see no potential bias here. I would say that I'm console gamer first, but I also play on PC. Now, for the most part, it also comes to, uh, well, performance and I guess options, right? I like having options and, um, you know, I enjoy PC gaming when it works. Already you're showing your hand here. You're just saying you like options, but using that as why you prefer console over the PC is completely backwards. It, also, you enjoy PC gaming when it works? I thought we were over this whole narrative of PC gaming just being rampantly broken. And that's actually the main problem with PC gaming. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Well, there are obviously plenty of high example profiles of games performing poorly on the PC, especially recently. I really don't understand why some people seem to think this happens at a drastically lower rate on the consoles. There have been tons of high profile console games that launched with abysmal performance, but their PC port was drastically better. In fact, I'd say about 95% of multi-platform games have a superior PC port. No matter what sort of PC you've got, no matter what kind of specs you've got, right? And yes, it does happen on consoles sometimes as well. You're going to get a uh, very poorly optimized games on consoles sometimes, but... Exactly. There are poorly optimized games on both systems. The big difference is one of those systems doesn't have one universal set of hardware, meaning one person's poorly optimized could be another person's average. Sure, that adds a decent amount of chance to the platform, but I'd confidently say that, I don't know, 75, 85% of PC games are going to run with minimal performance issues. But let's compare that to the other side of the argument. If a game comes out, quote, poorly optimized on the Xbox, you don't really have any options. The game is just stuck like that until the developers maybe put out a patch for it. Performance issues are much easier to fix on the PC, both for the consumer and the developer, and you also have to consider that when a PC game comes out, quote, poorly optimized, it's still almost always running better than the console counterpart. Remember Gotham Knights? That game was so poorly optimized all around on every platform, but the only platform that was maxing you out at 30 FPS were the consoles. I'm not excusing bad PC ports by any means, especially not after Callisto Protocol, but there really needs to be some nuance when talking about game stability and optimization from console to PC. Um, well, the problem with PC is, is that I think that um, at least some developers, for some reason, um, tend to think that, you know what, we don't really have to spent too much time optimizing for PC because you know what we can always say that you know what if this game is not running well in your PC just upgrade your PC and uh is that what developers are saying about PC they're saying if performance is bad then you should upgrade your PC that's it because that sounds more like what console developers have been saying to us telling you to upgrade your machine or literally be just left out of a whole bunch of new games 
Like, that's already happening with certain developers talking about leaving the Xbox Series S behind for certain new titles going forward. Which would be absolutely insane if that ends up being true. Like, that would be the most successful scam, I think, in history. Console comes out as the budget option during a horrible hardware shortage, so it cheeses its way to millions and millions of units sold, and then it gets dropped from mainstream releases less than three years after launch. Like, holy shit, if that happens, I will literally eat lunch. Yes, of course, you can force a game one or the other to actually run better on any PC as long as you keep like throwing money at it, right? You can buy the, the most powerful GPU on the market. You can keep throwing money at your PC, it doesn't mean you have to. I'd say most avid PC gamers buy new parts rather infrequently, and almost all of your purchases are going to be out of desire, not necessity. You don't have to buy new hardware every five seconds, but it's an option that you have. And a lot of people will do it for the same reason that you'll buy the upgraded Xbox when it comes out. Except in your situation, it's going to be much more crucial that you don't fall behind the new hardware release schedule. Games are still being released for the original Xbox One, but that doesn't mean the original Xbox One is going to run them well. On the other side of that coin, some computer hardware from 2013 is still perfectly acceptable to have in your build, assuming other pieces have been updated and you've taken care of it. And before you comment it, no, I am not suggesting a 2013 era PC is a viable next-gen piece of hardware. But what I am saying is that a 2013 PC in the year 2022 probably has way more gaming value and potential than any console that came out that year would carry into today. You can buy the fastest CPU on the market, you can buy the, the fastest memory system and that kind of stuff, right? But yeah, I mean... I would say that enough is enough, and... Yeah, enough is enough. Stop giving me options, damn it. Tell me what I want and then take my money. You know, like, a, a good example is... Um, well, there's, there's actually two games, and, like, previously there was even more, but um, just, just recently, last three days, really, um, two games actually dropped on PC and consoles, well... Yes and no. Okay, I'll tell you in a minute. Well, now I'm on the edge of my seat. Um, so I'm talking about Dark Tide. So that's actually dropped only for PC. And for context, Warhammer 40k Dark Tide is currently sitting with a 66% on Steam after like a week and a half. Uh, we're still waiting for um, Xbox version. And also Callisto Protocol, right? So And here's where Callisto Protocol is on Steam. Not doing too hot, and rightfully so. If you release a bad PC port, you're going to hear about it, which is part of the reason why user reviews are so important today. Still blows my mind that if you use the Epic Game Store instead of Steam for PC gaming, there's a substantial chance you would have bought this game without ever hearing about any of the technical issues. Again, not excusing anything here. It's just, you know, a weird observation. So uh, these two games are good examples, uh, but there's a, a, also other like Gotham, Gotham Knights, for example, another game that has not been really well optimized for PC. You know, I was kind of expecting you to avoid talking about Gotham Knights, you know, since it's maxed out at 30 FPS on the console. In case you care, Gotham Knights is actually doing pretty okay in terms of Steam user reviews. But part of that is because the game actually functions like a video game over here. In fact, the Xbox version of Gotham Knights is ironically doing worse than the PC version in terms of user reviews. It's almost like games can perform like ass on any platform. One of them just has higher standards when it happens. Uh, well, Plague Tales, you know, is not really well optimized e either in my opinion, right? Uh... Congratulations, you just named another game that actually is being received better on Steam than Xbox. And I know 8.4 on Metacritic is actually really good, I'm not denying that at all. And obviously a direct comparison between Metascore and Steam user reviews, I, I, I understand the I understand the issues there. I'm just trying to make a quick visual is all. And I just think it's funny that you named two games in a row that actually have been received generally better on PC, and yet you're using them as W's for Xbox. Um, and it's it's really demanding, I would say, right? And yes, you can always say, yeah, you know, it's a you know pretty game. You just you need better hardware, but. I don't know, there's other games that actually look great as well and actually run better and... Wait, so if you think Plague Tale runs alright, that doesn't actually matter because other games look and run better? Is that actually what you just said? I'm... I'm confused. You know, these games tend to actually get better performance later. Actually, that even happened with Plague, Plague Tale a little bit. It's Plague Tale, not Plague's Tale. It's a tale about a plague, it's not the Plague's Tale. You silly goose. 
because they did improve performance on PC um, a cu couple of weeks after, right? Oh yeah, that's the other thing. PC patch comes out and the game is running a lot better. Meanwhile, the Xbox version is maxing out at 1440p while targeting 30 FPS. The keyword is targeting. They can't even lock it there. Oh, sorry, my bad. They're actually targeting 40 FPS. Forgive me. And um, so let's go back to Callisto Protocol and the Dark Tide, right? You know, so my biggest problem with these two games on PC is that like they're not really well optimized. And um, and I can't wait for Callisto Protocol to be hoisted up as the poster child of PC gaming sucks videos for the next like five years. Like if Twitter and YouTube keep this up, Callisto Protocol may actually be the new Arkham Knight. And by all means, drag the shit out of Callisto Protocol. Like, I'm not I'm not stopping you from doing that. The fact that it came out the door like that is fucking insulting. But the big difference between the bad PC releases and bad console releases is if we reconvene a month after launch, chances are the PC version is going to be running significantly better than it was when it came out, while the console version is still likely going to be maxing out with underwhelming numbers. Well, Callisto Protocol, for example, it's an Unreal Engine game. Dark Tide may be Unreal Engine game as well. I'm not really sure. I think it is. Actually, it's running on Fat Shark's in-house engine. It took me like eight seconds to figure that out. Uh, I will have to double check, but it doesn't even matter whether that's Unreal or not. because It doesn't matter that the game is built on Unreal, but I made a point to bring up that both of these games run on Unreal. Um, I don't want to focus on, on Unreal alone because it's not Unreal only, only problem. Then why'd you bring it up? But um, yeah, that problem happens a lot on Unreal, unfortunately. Does it? I mean, Unreal 4 had plenty of issues, but Unreal 5 seems to be chugging along pretty well so far. I mean, at least much better than its predecessor. And the, the problem I've got sometimes with these games, especially like day one releases, is that like developers, like they release these games, right? And, you know, you just have to deal with a lot of bugs at the very beginning and you say that like it's a requirement like a right like a rite of passage i mean i guess modern gaming is a you know a lot more technically challenged than it once was but it's a weird thing to bring that up especially when your platform of choice isn't doing too hot there yeah i, I don't mind a bug here and there but like when you've got like a, a very poor performance it's just taking away the the whole enjoyment that's very true so why would you want to play on a platform that severely restricts how much you can actually get out of the hardware? From playing a game. And that happens sometimes on consoles as well, don't get me wrong, but it's not as often. And I mean, I would argue the console runs games poorly far more often than the PC, but I also seem to have much higher standards than you for my games. I'm not just sitting here accepting 30 FPS. If a game's running that poorly, I don't even want to touch it. But then again, there's not a whole lot of locked 30 FPS games on my platform. In fact, I don't, I don't think there's any. Not in the last like ten years, at least. Like Callisto Protocol, right? So I'm playing Callisto Protocol on Xbox Series X in performance mode, so it's 4K, 60 frames per second, pretty stable. Yes, there's some frame dips here and there, but that's nothing major. Oh, nice! It's 2022, and they finally figured out 4K 60. Remember when the Xbox One X was being marketed like this big 4K machine, and then you had to wait another like six years to actually get consistent 4K gameplay? And that's the performance mode on the Series X. The Series S can't even lock this thing at 30 FPS. And I know this is still better than what the PC was pulling off on launch day, but aside from the fact that the PC version is largely fixed already, the console version really just isn't anything I'd go up to bat for. Just because it's running better than a broken port doesn't mean it's actually running well. Like, people actually dropped $70 to play this thing at sub-30 FPS on a console that came out two years ago. That's fucking embarrassing. Like, what year is it? And yeah, Xbox Series X is a decent console, of course, like, you know, and uh, it runs this great game great. Like, the game looks really, really good. Um, well, well, ray tracing is missing on um, Xbox for some reason, but that's another topic, I guess. Wait, why is that another topic? Isn't that literally the topic? Graphics and comparisons and how games run? Like, that literally is the current topic. And then you've got PC, and even if you've got like RTX 4090 or 4080 or something like very powerful GPUs, right? You can have the best CPU ever, and you're still going to get these bloody stutters, right? And yes, every piece of hardware is capable of running faulty software. That's been established. The very fact that we play video games means we are aware that performance issues are possible on any piece of hardware. 
The whole thing you're missing though is the fact that performance issues on the PC are easier to fix and just easier to brute force your way through, or maybe adjust a few settings to mitigate the issues. In your eyes, 30 FPS is still acceptable performance. So who are you to make these sweeping generalization about how poorly the PC does things? And this is actually the, the main problem with Unreal Engine, I guess, right now. Um, they still haven't really figured out the best way to actually get rid of these stutters. Again, I haven't heard anything really about Unreal 5 being particularly stuttery. I haven't experienced many issues myself on Unreal 5 games, but I also haven't played that many Unreal 5 games yet. So, you know, it could just be me. I know Unreal 4 had a ton of annoying issues, but I, I thought those were mostly ironed out in 5. Maybe I'm just out of the loop. I don't know. And it's very obvious. And Digital Foundry spoke about it so many times, and other tech YouTubers actually spoke about it as well. But unfortunately, there's something about Unreal making. I mean, they still haven't figured out a good way to stream, uh, you know, shading information and, you know, the... the you know, but it it might it has something to do with uh, like caution or whatever, right? Yeah, sure. I'll take your word for it. If this was your big zinger argument, though, I'm confused as to why you brought up Warhammer in the video earlier. Like, why? So <clears throat> basically, the uh, shading information needs to be um, basically uh, done on the fly. Uh, you know the you know for textures and and graphics and whatever. Yeah, the textures and the graphics and whatever. Uh, and and that doesn't have to be done on consoles on the fly because on consoles, you've got one spec and developer can run all these in you know calculations before the game is even like or maybe after the game is compiled. I I don't know. Good on you for ending that sentence with I don't know. You probably should have just said that at the beginning and then left out the rest of it, but here we are. You also seem to be forgetting that Unreal Engine 4 had a ton of issues on both PC and consoles. Problems with game engines exist on all platforms. I don't know why you're trying to argue that Unreal Engine is somehow perfect on the console. Again, I don't have a ton of personal experience with Unreal 5, but given the fact that I grew up during the Xbox 360 and Xbox One era, I've probably played hundreds of Unreal 3 and 4 games, and I can tell you with absolute certainty that the engine has had a ton of annoying quirks on the console as well. In particular, the whole target 30 FPS thing. And isn't it funny how big AAA games were targeting 30 FPS on the Xbox 360 back in the mid to late 2000s? Some things just never change. But either way, it's already there. You know, the game, there's no problem there with Unreal Engine. There's no stutters on consoles. Oh, you just flat out said it. Apparently there are no issues with Unreal Engine on consoles. This is what perpetually low standards look like. You are so conditioned to mediocrity from the things you buy and support that you are now quite literally ignoring problems with your hardware simply because it's not as in your face as it is on other platforms. It's honestly incredible to watch this. But on PC, because there's like different configurations and that kind of stuff, um, the game has to, you know, Unreal Engine has to deal with that on the fly. And that's why, why you get these starters every single time you hit a new location and stuff like... Damn, it's a good thing console games never stutter when you walk into a new location. Wait, it, the, the, there is this stutter and it's just, it's terrible, especially on the, on Callisto Protocol. We truly are in the era of PC gaming sucks because Callisto Protocol. We did it. We finally shook off Arkham Knight and now the peace times are over. Fantastic. Thanks for that one. You dicks. Now, developers apparently released some patch and I'm not sure if they fixed that. Um, if only there was a way to find out. And I bet that even if they did, I don't think that will just go away straight away. Optimism, the key to every compelling argument. Um, and this is not a new thing. Like, you know, Stray had that problem. And I think the uh, even some of the PlayStation games on PC had that problem as well. So a bunch of non Unreal 5 games? Stray was on Unreal 4, and the Sony games all run on a whole bunch of different engines. Like, I'm not denying that Unreal 5 has its issues, but you're doing the thing where you bring up a problem and then just talk yourself further and further away from the situation, almost as if you don't actually have anything to say about the main topic that you brought up. What I'm saying is you're wasting everyone's time. Um, 
so like even though you may get like 120 frames per second on RTX 1490 and stuff like then you get that stutter like once every every single time you hit a new level or new location and and I'm not even talking about like loading new levels per se but just new area like you enter a new corridor and stuff like within the same level you may I mean, you may hit the stutter again it's just like okay call me crazy but I would much rather play a game at 100 FPS with occasional stutter than a targeted 30 to 40. Like, that's not even a question. It's honestly getting kind of hard to follow your train of thought at this point, but if that actually is the argument you're making, no, I, I think you're totally wrong. I will happily take 100 FPS with some stutters over a maximum of 40 frames per second, and I am not even close to being alone in that boat. How long is this video now? Um, oh, shit. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna call this one here. It's getting a little repetitive, if a bunch of people want it, I'll, I might do part two, but I'm, I'm calling this one for the sake of everyone's sanity. So go take a drinking break. No, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Go take a Dark Souls break. Just don't think about this video anymore until I upload again. Then, then you can think about that video instead. Okay, toodles.